What more can you tell us about this offer sheet? Well, I mean, Malika, it's really been uh, a year plus in the making. You know, Phoenix simply last year when uh, DeAndre Ayton was up for his rookie extension uh, would not offer him a max contract, simply did not value him at that level. And uh, Ayton's agents, Bill Duffy, uh, Nima Namakian, and listen, I think they had confidence they could go out on the market and do exactly what they're doing today, and that's get DeAndre in a max offer sheet. Four years, $133 million. And now and the question is, do the Phoenix Suns match this sheet, keep DeAndre Ayton at a number that – you know, they, they you know, essentially challenged Aiton to go get, and now he's done that. And obviously, if he, they don't match this sheet, they lose him for nothing, and that is significant for a team that has championship aspirations in Phoenix. If they keep him, well, then they can trade him, certainly uh, after January 15th. They can't trade him to Indiana for a full year. Uh, and now that's the question for this Suns team. But for the Pacers, Listen, DeAndre Ayton loved the idea of playing with Tyrese Halliburton. This is a, you certainly see the rebuild going on in Indiana. A lot of interesting young players. And DeAndre Ayton is just going to turn 24 next week. So this, for the Pacers, uh, is making a run at, you know, a young player that could be a centerpiece along with Halliburton uh, as they reshape this roster in Indiana under new coach or second-year coach now, Rick Carlisle. So what happens, Woj, now over the next two days if we're talking about the Phoenix Suns here? Well, listen, they can obviously extend this out until uh, Saturday at midnight. Uh, until DeAndre Ayton signs the offer sheet, which I'm told he has not done yet, it's expected it'll be as soon as today, they can work out a sign-and-trade where essentially, you know, they can get back assets in Phoenix if they simply uh, don't want to match the sheet and, and don't want to give him this contract. Is there a deal, an agreement that could be worked out? But the expectation now is that Aiton is going to sign the offer sheet. He has agreed to it. And now uh, Phoenix, once he signs that sheet, you know, they essentially have, you know, they can typically teams – don't tell the other we're matching it right away. They let it kind of hang there for a couple of days. It used to be a lot long. It used to be several days, mm. or it was longer than the two days. Uh, but right now, uh, they've got until Saturday night at midnight uh, Eastern time to match this offer sheet. And this is certainly a Phoenix, again, a Phoenix organization. They drafted DeAndre at number one. He's been very productive there. Um, but salary caps are, are an allocation of money. And they've certainly committed a lot to Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Mikel Bridges, and there was only so far they were willing to go. And I think they were, they were dubious that DeAndre Ayton could get a max offer sheet out in the marketplace. Uh, but Bill Duffy, Nima, uh, Nima Namaki, and his agents were able to do that. And now we see what Phoenix's decision is on matching the sheet. Well, over the last couple of weeks, Woj, as you've been on this show, we've discussed sort of how Kevin Durant has been a domino that held up the rest of the market. But it seems that that is no longer the case. So when you're looking at the full landscape of the league, you mentioned the possibility of a sign-and-trade. What happens now? Well, listen, once he signs this offer sheet in Indiana, Malika, you know, it takes him out of the conversation to be part of a bigger trade, um, either with Phoenix, if they were trying to still do a multi-team deal for a Kevin Durant. Uh, but the sign and trade right now would be if they were to do one before he signs the deal, I have no indication that that's going to happen. Mm. And he's planning to sign this offer sheet. Then, you know, he's either going to be in Indiana when they don't match it or it's matched. He goes to Phoenix and then neither team can trade him. Certainly, once he signs the offer sheet, he can't be traded again until January 15th uh, in either place. Interesting. Woj, thank you so much for joining us. We will be keeping a very close eye on your reporting as this continues to unfold. Now, I do want to bring in our front office insider, Bobby Marks. Bobby, we just heard from Woj that the offer sheet, it hasn't actually been signed yet, but the expectation, all intentions are, Woj is reporting, that that is going to happen. How do you look at the situation? 
Yeah, I look at it that we've got an eight-hour window right now to possibly get a sign-in trade worked out if that's what the Phoenix Suns want to do. And if it, we get to midnight tonight, that Aiton will sign that offer sheet, and now they'll have to make a decision as far as to keep him or leave, or let him lo uh, leave for nothing. And I think it's important that because the clock officially doesn't start until midnight. So we do have this little bit of a – I guess a small window here if mm. there's there's still a sign-in trade to work out. But remember, we're, what are we, two weeks into free agency right yep. now? If there was a sign-in trade to be worked out, it could have been worked out a week ago here. So maybe that they feel the pressure that to maybe recoup him for nothing here. But if, if there's nothing to be agreed upon, we just we, we wait for the next two days what the Suns will do. Well, you have been in these situations, Bobby. You've been in the room making these trades, making these decisions. How would you go about the next couple of hours if you were the Phoenix Suns? Well, I would probably pass on a on a sign and trade. I think that's how I'm looking at it because the likelihood is that you would get a player like Miles Turner back who's on an expiring contract, and now you're going to be faced a year from now as far as possibly paying Turner big money as an unrestricted free agent. And for me, I think we you play out the two days. I think it will be interesting what's in that – will be in that offer sheet, Malika. Will there be a 15% trade bonus? Will mm. there be an advance? I think what you want to do is you want to put the full bells and whistles in this to make it – for Phoenix to kind of think twice about here. I think if you're Indiana, I'm, I'm looking to probably put a $10 million advance against his salary there. So now if you're Robert Sarver, you're going to have to pay that on to Aiton, you know, on, I guess, August 1st here. So it'll be interesting what it is. You want all the bells and whistles on here, as I said, and I think the trade kicker will probably certainly be something that's included in it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.